Hi and welcome back to the Positive Prepper. I'm going to talk today about food. Um, we're on the brink of something that could be absolutely disastrous for our country right now. Um, you know, we all know about the shortages that are going on. Um, you know, the they're having trouble getting the materials to make the jugs for uh, milk. Um, some states, such as in Wisconsin, um, they're paying farmers um, to grow non or to grow cover crops, um, um, so that they can reduce the amount of carbon dioxide that goes into the air and um, to halt erosion. And I'm putting this in quotation marks because I think this is the excuse that they use for it. Um, on the surface, it looks like a really good deal, but small farmers are becoming unable to pay for the corn and the bean meal that they feed their livestock. Um, so when, when, for example, corn prices go way, way up, um, hog farmers are having to reduce their herd because it costs too much to feed them. Um, you know, and we also have the supply chain disruptions. Um, I'm pretty sure that you're all aware of that as well. Um, and, you know, in the past year, farmers have had to dump their milk. Um, and the, the colonial pipeline hacking and that um, Texas storm showed how really fragile um, our systems are when it comes to being able to handle a crisis. So if we already have these shortages and these supply line disruptions and all of that, now we're going to add on top of that the national debt. Um, if these insane uh, spending bills get passed through our government, um, this could put our, our, um, our, our debt, um, at 106 or 107 percent of our gross domestic product. So obviously far out, far exceeding our spending from what we are actually bringing in. Um, and I don't know how many of you know this, but... Many countries, almost all international trade is done in U.S. dollars. There are some examples where they use their own currency, for example, Russia and China. So for trade between them, they use their own currency. Um, but almost all other international trade is paid for in dollars. So... Um, if other countries start walking away from the dollar because they see what's happening here in our country, um, it would be a massive economic collapse. Our dollar would absolutely mean nothing, right? So then if this happens, we can compare the effect of that to the 1999s, um, what Argentina looked like. 25% um, of their population was out of work. Um, there was massive inflation. Does this sound familiar? Uh, food just became too expensive, if you could get it, uh, for people. Um, and so it was a complete breakdown in, in their society. Um, and so what stores will do here, if that happens, if we, if we go down that road is they're either going to hold their supplies and like ration it or they will um, just outright sell it at much higher prices because they don't get a lot of a percentage from the sale of their goods. Um, I think the average is like 2.2%. Um, go ahead and look that up and please correct me. It's I think it's somewhere in that neighborhood. And so they're going to hold that back and just ration that out 
or they will just outright sell it, but they're gonna, the prices are gonna go really, really high. So this is something that I want you to think about. Um, when you go to the grocery store, what are some of the basic things that you tend to need on a an almost daily or weekly basis? So for that, I'm talking specifically about your things like your milk, your eggs, um, bread, butter, okay? So during an SHTF, you're most likely not going to be able to just run to the grocery store and grab these basic staples that I think everybody has in their home. Um, and so I just want to give a few hints on how to um, stock up on some of these main staple things. So let's start with milk. So you can start buying powdered milk and that can re be, that can be repackaged in your jars or peat plastic containers. Um, just add your oxygen absorbers so that it takes all the oxygen out of it. Uh, shelf stable milk that's in um, cardboard containers um, or commercially canned milk but those have a lot lower uh, stable shelf life than your um, powdered or your dried milk. So I would recommend that you start stocking up on your powdered milk, which has a lot longer uh, shelf life. Um, I don't recommend, and others may disagree with me and that's okay, but I don't recommend um, canning any dairy products like adding dairy to your soups whether it's milk cheese whatever I don't recommend it the chances of those enzymes creating an illness um, after a certain period of time I think is pretty high that's my opinion um, you know if if you can prove me wrong on that please do okay so the next thing is bread um, if you're storing your flour in like your airtight uh, plastic containers, freeze the flour overnight first. Um, that kills any insect eggs and keeps your flour fresh longer. Okay. That being said, the best idea for bread is just to store your own wheat. Um, your preserved wheat will last for tens of years, okay, versus, um, you know, obviously you can't store bread for that long. Um, so store your own wheat and then you can ground the wheat into your own flour to make your bread. Um, you can look it up on YouTube. There's bread that you can make with only three ingredients, you know, things like that. Um, and you can make your own yeast for making bread. And you can use things like raisins or other fruit um, with sugar or honey. Um, and then you can also make yeast from potatoes. So YouTube that stuff about how to make yeast from these other things that you can do, um, that you can, you can stock up on and prep on so that if SHTF happens and we have an economic collapse and there's massive food shortages, that you're still getting these basic staples that you need. If you are a soup canner like we are, um, there's nothing better than having that bread right to go into that nice thick soup broth. Um, so you're going to want to be able to have a means to make your own bread. Okay, next, the next one is eggs. Um, have raising, obviously raising your own backyard chickens is the best way to go. It really is, right? Not only do you have your chicken meat, but you also have your eggs. But if you can't do that, you can dehydrate your eggs. 
and store them as part of your prepping supplies. Um, or you can buy already dehydrated or powdered eggs. Um, I'm not sure what the shelf life on those are, um, but you can take your eggs um, and you can, um, you so you scramble up your eggs, and again, look this up on YouTube, you can find it on there. Scramble up your eggs, and then you put them in the oven to, and then you, well, after you scramble them, you like uh, mince them up, like put them in a, in a, um, like a bullet blender or something like that. And then you put them in the oven and get out the rest of the um, moisture. And then you can it and you do that in your oven as well. And that'll last a long time. Um, remember that with almost everything, your powder is always going to work better for your long-term storage than liquid. And this is true for your eggs. This is true for your laundry detergent, your dish detergent, that type of stuff. Powder is always better than liquid, in my opinion. Okay. Um, speaking of sort of that dehydrated egg that you can do in your oven, you can dehydrate. Dehydrators are not that expensive. So if you can afford to go out and get a dehydrator, you can dehydrate your carrots, your celery, your onions, your potatoes, okay? And you can ground them down or you can leave them in chunks. You can dehydrate fruit. Um, obviously, your like your beef jerkies are dehydrated for meat. Um, if you don't have a garden and you can't grow your own vegetables to dehydrate, Go buy frozen vegetables in the grocery store. Most likely they're already cut into the chunks. So you can take those and dehydrate them um, right from the freezer bag. Okay, so these are ways to stock up on all of these food preps that you most likely are going to need within the next couple of years. So the next one is cheese. Um, if you're like me, you like having that cheese with your your prepped supply of wine, right? The stuff you're not going to use for barter. Um, powdered Parmesan cheese will last forever. Okay? It makes a great um, a addition to your soups or on your... You know, pastas are so easy to stockpile. Put some Parmesan cheese on there. If you don't have any sauce, it changes the flavor. You can use Parmesan cheese in sandwiches. You know, there's there's so much that you can do with that. Um, and you can also buy cheese powder, which is going to last you a very long time as well. If you want fresher cheese, though, if you want something other than the canned Parmesan cheese, buy your cheese and buy official cheese wax and wax your cheeses. Um, you have to be careful how you store that cheese. Okay? So you have to make sure that you're using, number one, the official cheese wax. Okay, don't, you can't melt crayons and do it. You need the cheese wax. But then number two, you have to make sure that it is kept in a cool, dark, dry environment. But if you do that, that cheese can last a very long time. The best thing to use for that is your hard cheeses, like your Colby, Colby your Swiss, and your Parmesan. Um, you can use a soft cheddar, which I know is, is kind of the opposite of what I just said, but your soft cheddar, if it's encased in that wax, will actually harden as time goes on. So then you have your harder cheddar cheese. Okay. Um, but I would just try to stick with your, um, 
your um, Colby Swiss and Parmesan. Okay, start with your already hard cheeses. Um, so the last one is butter. Um, I have not tried this yet. I'm going to be honest with you, but butter can be canned. Um, and I believe that there's also canned butter or powdered. I think it's canned butter. Um, and if it's canned, and again, try to YouTube this, try to find a recipe for it. If you find it, put it in the comment section below for everybody. Um, if it's canned butter, that can last for years on your countertop. Okay. Um, and then um, for your powdered butter and your canned butter, that's not something you're probably going to find in the grocery store. Those are probably things that you're going to have to find either in Amazon or a, a food um, prepping food storage place on online. Um, you might be able to find some alternatives to that. Um, but what I've highlighted here are just some ways to start thinking about stocking up on some of those staple ingredients, staple things that we use, that we all use almost on a daily basis. So I hope that this video was very helpful. Um, it, it won't be long and I'm going to be doing an actual canning video for you. Um, I'm going to show the process, if, in case you're not familiar with it, um, from beginning to end, so that you can see how to make canned things. If there's something specific you would like to see canned, please put that in the comments section below. I am going to try the eggs thing, and I am going to try the butter thing, um, and we'll see how that goes, but I will make sure that I upload those videos as well. You guys all have a very awesome day. God bless.